In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how you can create visuals similar to the ones Weird Core makes for Apex Twins live shows using Ableton Live. This is just a short introduction. If you want to jump straight to the start of the tutorial, just skip ahead to the next chapter. So I'm going to be using some software called Zwobot, which is a suite of Max for Live devices that you can use to create visuals for your music inside of Ableton. In this video, I'm not going to be going into how to use Zwobot and what all the modules do and how they work, but I do have a series of tutorials that goes into all that. So if you want to watch tutorials on how Zwobot works, what all the different devices and modules do, how the sound reactivity works, how the BPM syncing works and all that, you can watch that playlist. I'll put a link to it in the top right corner of the screen now. So the purpose of this video and this video series isn't to exactly replicate what Weirdcore and Aphex Twin have already done. It's simply to provide you with some inspiration and places to start if you want to create your own visuals that have a similar aesthetic. Okay, so the particular effects that I'm going to base this tutorial on is this one. This is taken from the warehouse project Aphex Twin show that he did in Manchester in 2017. If you want to watch the full show, the link is in the description below. So what's happening here is that there's a camera on the crowd and then that camera feed is being fed into Weird Core's computer. He's applying effects to it on the fly and that's then being projected back out onto the screens on the stage. So first of all, we've got this stretch effect where the sides of the screen you can see are being stretched and then we've got the image of the audience in a kind of shape so how can we do that in Zwobot? one thing to note with this whole thing of the camera being on the audience if like me you're a smaller independent artist playing in smaller venues it's going to be extremely difficult to recreate that if you're playing in a small music venue it's probably going to be very dark if you're trying to use a webcam on the stage you're probably not going to pick up the audience very well so maybe you can use a video of some footage of an audience or you just use a video of something completely different for the sake of this video i am going to use my webcam just so i can demonstrate how you would do that if you wanted to so at the bottom of my signal chain, I've got this AUX module or device, which is what allows you to use a webcam feed. So if I switch that on, there you can see I've activated my webcam. So I've selected cam, I've selected my webcam from here. You just need to make sure that this is switched on. And by default, this transparency setting is turned all the way up. So you just need to bring that down as well. On top of that then, this is a Petra module. What this does is it creates different shapes. So if I turn the blend mode off, I just set it to color. You can see you can have these different shapes and you can move them around in the 3D space. So I've got sphere, capsule, cylinder. If I go to cylinder or capsule even, and then put the blend modes to multiply, then I can put myself in this shape and I can move this round to change the shape. And then we've got two stretch modules. So one is set to stretch on the left, so that's doing this side. One we've got stretch to the right. And they're both set to lines mode. And the reason I've got two, because you can have it go in on both the left and right like that. But if you want it to be different on the left side and the right side, you can have a, one on the left, one on the right, and then you can change how much it's applied on each side so if I want a bit less on the right then I can have a bit more on the left using these uh, stretch dials and you can have these respond to the audio if you want so I've just got them static at the moment but if I did want them to respond to the audio I can set it to low or high so that's referring to the frequencies of the audio and which frequencies you want it to respond to so I'll play some audio here. This track that I'm using here is by an artist called Phase 4. This is a track on Machine Records. I'll put a link to their Bandcamp page in the description and to this specific EP. If you like Aphex Twin, there's loads of amazing experimental, electronica, IDM, brain dance, whatever you want to call it. That kind of stuff on Machine Records. So check them out if you like that kind of thing. This is a track called Language Barrier by Phase 4. Thank you. 
Okay, so if I set this to low now, you'll see the stretch is changing in accordance with the lower frequencies. And I could set this right one to high. So we get the lower frequencies on here and the higher ones here. Okay, I'm going to turn the sensitivity of those high ones up. There we go. It's probably a bit too much there. But for the purposes of this, I'm just going to leave it at that static setting. And there's also a bit of colouring on it, so you can use this colour module. And I've got the... I've expanded this menu and I have set it to change in accordance with the beat. So every... I've got a master beat control over here. Every half note in accordance with your Ableton BPM is going to change colour. So you can sync it to the music. You can also set it to the lower or higher frequencies if you want, like I did with the stretch. But I'm going to leave it on beat. And I've also put this multiply blend mode on because... Well, maybe I'll keep it on. You can experiment with blend modes as well on every single module to get different effects. Yeah, I'll keep it on um, hard light. And finally, there's kind of a stutter effect on there. So I've got this stutter module, and that does this. Gives it a little stutter effect. And you can change the speed of that, so you can make it very fast here. And you can adjust the buffer, so how much it buffers. I'm going to keep it on a slow speed. And maybe a slightly higher buffer. So that's kind of the first effect that he's using, something like this. So for this next effect, the audience members, as you can see, start getting put in these weird shapes. And then there's some color effects in there. There's kind of a posterized effect, it looks like, in there as well. And then you start getting these kind of shapes, which look like it's some sort of, sort of like a 3D helix shape. For this part, I'm going to use a video instead of using the webcam. I've got this video of some sort of 80s new wave disco. And I've got this set to jump to a random frame every half note. So the video is jumping about in time with the master BPM. So in terms of effects, I've got this 3D device. So what this does, you can drop in a 3D object and then it'll put the background video inside of that 3D object. So you can see that video is now inside this shape. So when you buy the suite of this robot, you get a bunch of 3D shapes with it. And this is one of them, it's a helix. And you can animate it using this pad here. And you can have it automatically move in accordance with the master BPM. So let's play some audio. And you can have the background switched on or off. So I'm going to turn the background on. I'm going to make it bigger. Like this. Got it set to texture mode. You can also have different modes. And then on top of that, we've got the Petra module again. I've still got it set to multi-mode. I've got this extrude setting turned on though. I've also got the size responding to the lower frequencies and the extrude responding to the lower frequencies. So if I turn the blend mode off, you'll see what that extrude setting is doing. It's kind of expanding or pushing the image out. Okay, so let's keep that on multiply. I've also got it moving and I've got the shapes set to an LFO, so they're changing randomly every note. Let's put that 3D shape back on. And I've also got the stretch module applied. And I'm going to put some colour effects on there. And then I've got this mosh module, which applies a data mosh effect. 
So in my signal chain, I've got that just on top of the 3D object. So it's applying it on top of the 3D object. And if you didn't want certain shapes, so for example, on your Petra module, if you only wanted it to jump between certain ones, like capsule, sphere, or circle, you can manually program in automation to tell it to do that. And there is this multi module, which you can use as well, which will apply another shape. So I've got this torus shape inside there as well now, and I've got it set to auto rotate. I'm going to switch it off. And yeah, that's pretty much it. It's not exactly the same, but we're not trying to recreate it exactly as it is. And if you want, you can apply this stutter module on top of it as well. If you want to give it that stuttery glitchy effect and you could have an LFO applied to this to have it come on and off. So you could have it switch on every other bar or something like that as an accent. And yeah, there's so many settings that you can change here, which will alter how it looks. So if I drag this 3D object on top of here, you can see that becomes a bit more prominent. I could move the Petra object down here. So I could bring this data mosh effect up here. change the blend mode of this Petra module. And you could have these blend modes changing with a LFO if you wanted as well or you can manually program in the automation. And that's basically it. So I'll probably be doing another one of these videos, looking at another effect from one of Apex Twins live shows. If you want to see more videos about Zwobot, subscribe to the channel and have a look at my playlist of Zwobot tutorials.